Hi, I'm Dr. Ken Iserson. I'm your host for this program of three short videos. The first is when and why do we need to ration healthcare resources? And what's the ethical justification for that? The second is how do we plan for and initiate healthcare resource rationing? The third describes who allocates the scarce resources, describing how to identify, train, and use crisis triage officers to ration resources at the patient care level. It also discusses how risk communication techniques can make the entire system run more smoothly in crises. The key points for this video are when must we ration healthcare resources? Why must we ration healthcare resources? And what is the ethical justification for rationing healthcare resources? The first question is when must we ration healthcare resources? Rationing, or allocating, means distributing a limited amount of goods and services, in this case, medical treatment, when there are not enough for everyone needing or wanting them. Transportation disasters, natural disasters, or man-made disasters may result in shortages of healthcare resources. Even when no major disaster has occurred, emergency departments often have too many patients for their capacity. Multi-casualty incidents, such as after motor vehicle crashes and transportation or industrial mishaps, further stretch healthcare resources. The absence of a critical resource, such as water, food, linen, essential computer systems, communication, or electricity, can cripple healthcare services. Floods, large tornadoes, and hurricanes may cause widespread healthcare resource shortages. Terrorist incidents may cause regional shortages. Famine and severe poverty may require healthcare resource rationing on a national or an international level. Wars and epidemics of debilitating diseases may also require widespread rationing. Thus, local, regional, national, or international crises may require healthcare rationing. The length of time before help arrives the amount of available resources, and society's stability in the midst of crisis will determine how stringent the rationing needs to be. Our second question is, why must we ration healthcare resources? Rationing is necessary whenever a community's healthcare needs exceed its available resources. In reality, there are never enough resources to provide every person with every healthcare resource they may want or need. In crisis situations, Ambulances, healthcare workers, life saving equipment, and medications may become scarce. Rationing always comes down to a matter of time time to care for patients, time until additional resources arrive or can be developed, time until the patient will no longer benefit or there are no patients left, time until the crisis abates. Disaster plans must include an ethically based method for rationing healthcare resources. To function in crisis situations, healthcare personnel must prepare by practicing their roles in the plan. Our third question is, what is the ethical justification for rationing healthcare resources? Many ethical theories and principles have been applied to disaster response and healthcare resource rationing. Distributive justice is the principle that describes the fair allocation of resources. Key ethical principles that govern the fair allocation of healthcare resources include the principles of stewardship, equity, beneficence, and trust. Scarce healthcare resources are not any individual's property. They are public resources. We are responsible for managing them to provide the best public health outcome. This is called stewardship. To be a good steward of public resources, we must place the public's welfare ahead of our own. We have a special or fiduciary obligation to produce the best public outcome. Under normal circumstances, we try to give all our patients the health care resources they require, with the most ill and injured getting the greatest amount of resources the soonest. Distributing health care resources fairly and equitably does not mean simply splitting the resource pie into equal slices. How we distribute them must depend on people's differing needs. 
When resources are scarce, fairness or equity requires that we give priority to those who can clearly or most quickly benefit. As a result, some of the critically ill may receive only comfort measures. People enter the healthcare professions to do good. This does not change in times of resource scarcity. When possible, resources should be used to help those in need, but doing good can also include withholding resources from those who will receive no benefit. Such cases of non-beneficial or futile treatment can occur at any time, but they are more common during crises with limited resources. Establishing and maintaining trust between patients, clinicians, staff, healthcare institutions, and the community allows scarce healthcare resources to be fairly allocated. It also allows people to accept and feel comfortable with that allocation. To gain the public's trust, healthcare institutions and public health agencies must involve the community in crisis planning, and such planning must occur before a crisis develops. Any plan to ration healthcare resources must also reflect our general moral principles, such as respect for human rights and, whenever possible, diverse cultural values. Autonomy and a duty to treat are two familiar ethical principles that usually do not apply to disaster situations. Autonomy, or patient self-determination, often thought of as a bedrock principle of modern bioethics, has little place in the response to healthcare crises. In disasters, public welfare takes precedence. Individuals cannot demand treatment requiring too many resources. Similarly, one cannot refuse mandatory immunizations during an epidemic or refuse to be isolated or quarantined if these are necessary for the public good. The duty to treat patients in need is often accepted as a given by the public and by healthcare administrators. When they see themselves as being at risk, however, Healthcare professionals must decide whether they will even show up to work. The number of available healthcare professionals greatly affects the ability to respond effectively during crisis. The duty to treat is one of the most contentious values associated with post disaster healthcare. While some professional oaths and codes describe a duty to provide patient Whatever care in crisis situations, this is not universal and reflects a professional ambivalence. Recent experiences, however, demonstrate that healthcare professionals generally do respond during a crisis, even when their own lives may be at risk. However, ethical values are not the only factors affecting whether healthcare professionals and ancillary staff provide services during healthcare crises. All healthcare workers weigh the perceived risk to their own health and to that of their family and friends. Ancillary workers also weigh how much their services are valued. Risk communication strategies will improve healthcare professionals and support staff's response, help to alleviate fear, and maximize personal participation. Risk communication will be discussed in program number three. Thus, we can conclude that one, healthcare resources often must be rationed in many situations including natural and man-made disasters, epidemics, and multiple casualty incidents. Two, available resource to patient ratios, rather than the scope of the incident, govern whether resources must be rationed. And three, fair allocation of limited healthcare resources stems from following established ethical principles.